brand new EP, Deserve This, is set to be released next month. Could you tell us more about the upcoming record and what fans can expect from it? No, because I'm going to let you guys decide what you think of it. You know, I was very, very excited about the last record. And, uh, and then we turned the record in, and then the record label fiddled with our album. And when I was doing interviews leading up to it, I was very excited about the Stuck album. And then the album that came out wasn't exactly the album that we turned in. Mm -hmm. So with this record, I'm, I'm not really going to, you know, hype it up because I was, I was excited for Stuck. And then it was a disaster of a whole cycle for me. You know what I mean? On this record, I'm just going to release it and let every, and let you guys be blown away. You know, I'm not going to talk about how great it is. I'm not going to be talking about, you know, if every band thinks it's their best record ever that they made, you know, and we're always striving to make something great and create something great. At the end of the day, it's the fans and it's the people that, that work well within the industry that help us grow that matter when we deliver a record. And, and I want to see everyone's response to the hard work that we put in. We tried to make something, you know, great. And I believe we did, but I, time will tell. You know, and actually... Talking about your record label, something that kind of fascinated me when I was reading your Pledge Music page yeah. is the fact that you said that in eight years, you never had any of your music released across the pond. That's disgusting, do, huh? Do you know why that is? I was on the biggest record label in the world for eight years, and you could only hear our music in the United States and Canada. Do you think that might have of course. somehow hurt your success? Of course it has. Well, you're great. Of course it has. 100%. It's limited us. It's limited us to where we're, we're a band who... You know, we, we feel that we bring more to the table than our, our going overseas and having success overseas, and we're still pounding away in the States. And, and at the end of the day, we're going to fix that this year. Now, was this EP, was this self-produced, or do you have somebody working with you in the studio? You know, at the end of the day, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say self-produced, because that's, that's not what we're looking to do here. But yeah, we, we, had our, we were very, very in control of the direction of the record, but we also had... A team, a great studio. I mean, we did it in the studio that we did our first album in. Same gear, same equipment. The band, we, we the direction was ours, but we got to help getting the tones. Matt Doherty uh, at Groove Master Studios, who I think is an ace, man. I think he's a, you know, it's like when you find a young draft pick. You know, it's when you, it's like when you find Kevin Durant before he's <laughs> Kevin Durant. You know what I mean? We got Matt, and I think he's spectacular. So I would say the record was produced by us and Matt Doherty. Matt Doherty, yeah. Now, I mean, one thing I, I do find really interesting is that, you know, Flyleaf, who you're, who you're touring with tonight, they actually had their albums fan funded as well. It seems to be a direction that a lot of different artists are going, you know, I just like- Do the math. Do, your, I mean, do, do the math. math. Every band, band, I mean, soon you're gonna see every band do, we're just ahead of the curve right now. We're just beating people to the punch of doing it this way because in two years, all of your favorite bands, whether it's Stone Sour, whether it's Shine Down, eventually, they're all going to be on fan funded because the record companies, all they're walking around the building saying is rock is dead. How, how is that supposed to be a pot? How, how are you supposed to change the history of rock and roll or make something great when that's the negative bullshit you're hearing all day, every day from the buildings that are supposed to be spreading the music? And I, I think it's fascinating you're saying that because a really good point. There's these radio stations that are quote unquote indie rock or rock stations and you have them turned on and it sounds like something from a Disney commercial. Don't even get me started on some of the <laughs> rock stations. You know, I've been in the rock radio game for about 10 years now and uh, I can't believe the state it's in right now. I can't believe how many rock stations aren't supporting rock bands and it's hurtful because we've always done all, bands like us, Flyleaf, Shinedown, you know, Stone Sour. Those bands have always done everything for these radio stations for their listeners and for a lot of them to just turn their back on us when we need them is, is, is a slap in the face. And I think to turn your back on bands who've been core artists to your format and start playing like Milky Chance and Imagine Dragons, and it's like, dude, they have four stations already playing them. They don't need a fifth. Your station's not gonna stand out at all. Your station will stand out by playing Metallica and Flyleaf and Adelita's Way, Shinedown, Breaking Benjamin, you know what I mean? Not not just blending right in with the 55 alternative station and top 40 stations that are playing everything that rock is now trying to copy. I mean, there was a time in the 1990s, you know, when Nirvana and the grunge movement was coming where rock was legitimately taking over the radio and then all of a sudden everything starts drifting more towards a pop direction and there's no more true rock. Well, you're also forgetting guys. from 2001 to 2006, rock dominated as well. We yeah. dominated radio. Linkin Park was all over top 40 radio. 
Don't even get it in your mind that you think one of us is going to be on Top 40 Radio anytime soon. It's really crazy. Eventually, we're not going to be on TV. We're not going to be on. We're not going to be. You won't see us on Letterman. You won't see us on Kimmel. You won't see us on Top 40 Radio. You won't see us on Alternative Radio. If you want to see us, come to the show we're playing in your town. Come to the Snowcore Tour. Come to those kind of events and listen to your active rock station. They might not even be playing those bands because they're not trying to be involved in rock and roll. Anybody that turns their back on rock and roll can fuck off. That's how I feel. Why? And you know, Linkin Park, it's sort of funny you mention that. The whole reason they created their latest album is because, yeah, they had dabbled in electronic music, things like that. Of course. But you know, one day the lead singer, Mike, you know, one of the lead singers, turned on the radio and realized there's nothing that's real rock music on the radio anymore. No. The whole reason they went hardcore on their latest album is because they felt that there's a really huge gap from alternative music on the radio right now. Good for them. It's, it needs to come from artists who have influence. Me, I can keep making rock records, but my influence is minimal on the big picture. You know what I mean? Linkin Park is an iconic band. You know, when they put something out, they can shift the movement. You know, they can be the beginning. They got to make that great of a record. You know what I mean? They got to make the great, they got to make hybrid theory again. Not that record, but that record changed the tone of, of music at that time. You know what I mean? We, we want, you don't think we want to be the Nirvana. You, we don't want to be the band that comes in and wipes out an entire movement of shitty music, we want to. But right now, it seems like America and, and the world and everyone, they, they want to keep hearing banjos. They want to keep hearing finger stomps and finger snaps. And you know what I mean? And we're, I'm just not going to put that in my music. So it's, I mean, it's who we'll sit on the outside. Who do you think really changed rock music as you know it? Like who, who influenced you to want to become a rock and roll star? Oh man, it was that whole grunge movie. It was Nirvana, it was uh, The Offspring. It was the Offspring Smash record, you know, Green Day, Dookie record, um, you know, Soundgarden, you know, Stone Temple Pilots. I mean, you can go back. I mean, obviously, I love I love music from every era. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But but really, you know, I I, I love Raising Us the Machine. I, I love Audio Slave. I mean, I love I love just anything that's got melody, good guitars, riffs. I, I like riffs, man. I don't like when it's just you know dangly banjos and like finger snaps and foot stumps that doesn't make me feel like any can it doesn't connect with me anyway in life you know what i mean like when i hear mumford and sons i don't oh my god i'm really connected to this i feel an empty disconnect from it and i and it shocks me that that millions and millions of people in the world are feeling connected to that it's like that's how you feel what planet are you on what planet are you living on i'm old school and i'm listening to your music you know, pushing 60, searching for true rock and roll sound, and you guys have it. You got to live during the good yeah, times, yeah, man. I'm not, I'm not here on, 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 on you. You got to be a part of Hendrix and oh, Zeppelin. I, I, I've and, seen them all. I've even and, seen and Floyd build the wall. Yeah, you yeah, seen Pink Floyd. Floyd. I mean, yeah, look what you're getting now, man. I got to take my daughter to go see, you know, Five Direction and Seven, you know, and Seven Seconds of Summer and all these bands. I don't, and 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 Taylor Swift and I, I mean, it's. <laughs> It's I crazy. like the way the sports establishments have um, taken life into your songs and playing. I mean, are you a big Some of them fan? do, but I've noticed that I've been watching like Fox football and ABC football. And they're out there with a bunch of grown men in pads, like, shake it off. I shake it off. It's like, dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. that can't be pumping them up to get hit somebody, dude. Yeah, no, no. I mean, it hurts. A halftime show was okay, but I'd rather see the traditional rock and roll. It goes better exactly. with football. Look, we won't become cool again until we become so underground it's become cool, and it's almost there. That's a it's almost to the point where where we're we're like Fight Club, man. It's like you show up to a dungeon basement, you get blasted in the face of guitars, you walk out and have the best night of your life. Oh, I love that. Animal. And that's that's you know we're cool being we're cool being where we are, but it's a matter of time until it becomes so cool that Jimmy Kimmel is calling saying, "I want this band that's playing this dungeon sold out basement." You know what I mean? Like, so it's a matter of time till they all swing back around. I feel, and I want to be there when it happens. You know, if, if I'm not there, it's a bummer. But you know, I'm gonna go as long as I can. Now, one real final question, just to kind of just thank you, you know, you can't prepare it, man, I appreciate it. Um, the new record is coming out, because I understand you guys are doing the EP and then you're doing the new record. Yep. Is the new record gonna have some of the songs from the EP? Yep, or is it of course be- it is, okay. of course it is. But we're, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna give, we're, not, we're all about giving more music. So, you know, we're probably gonna track, you know, I'd say seven new songs, eight new songs for the, for the new record too, and we'll probably put a 12 song record on eight you know you will probably roll five over from the ep write seven new eight new ones maybe we'll only roll three over who knows how we're going to do it but we just want to give 
We're not going to not give you two songs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so like you didn't buy your piece, you don't get to listen. We're, to we're definitely going to do, you know, seven or eight new songs. So it's either you're going to get seven or eight plus three off the EP or plus five off the EP. You know what I mean? So. And how's the recording process going with that? Are you guys getting along pretty good? Is it going to be out during the summer? You think closer to the fall? What are you thinking right now? I think it's going to be out in the summer. You but know, we're working. We're working hard. A video attached with the EP release and all what? Yeah, we're talking about doing videos, you know what I mean? For YouTube purposes. That's where they are now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and hey, video you guys are working on the internet, man. Equals YouTube. So, yeah, we want to get some video, you know, some video footage. Yeah, we're going to get a lot of footage. I think we're going to have someone shoot our experience in the studio next time. That's that's all I have. Anything else you'd like to awesome. before we that's go? That's it. Just want to thank everyone. Thank you, guys. Uh, everyone keep rock and roll going. Yeah. Thanks for the no bullshit. I get around